Welcome in Braves Today. Bravestoday.com is where you are located. All brought to you by Active Wealth Management. Go to annuity360.net. You also can get a free book there as well. We'll have more on that momentarily. But first, he's Lindsey Crosby. I'm Ben Taylor, and it is playoff baseball time. And we got what Lindsey and I did not wish for, and that is Braves and Phils. <laughs> and I've told you, Lindsey, I, I think that Every one of these games are going to go five games because they all went just two games in the wild card race. So Major League Baseball, the fix is in. They want their money. They want that advertising dollar. My thoughts on that are, one, I can't believe that nobody forced a game three just so we had baseball to watch on Thursday. Come on, guys. But two, it's it, it's kind of rough for Atlanta now, right? Because for the most part, Philly now has the ability to kind of set their rotation. They don't get their choice of who they want for game one, but after game one, they can get right back into throwing their studs and doing everything fine. And so it's it's not ideal, but Atlanta has home foot advantage and you don't have a situation like last year where you have uh, Spencer Schreiber coming off an oblique injury, Max Fried having lost 15 pounds to the flu and then trying to go out there and face Philly Theoretically, Strider's at full health, and Freed with the blister should be fine for Game 2 as well. So, Game 1, going to be a really interesting matchup with Spencer Strider. And speaking of which, uh, Game 1, it looks like more than likely Suarez. Uh, that's not a definite yet, as rosters have, at the time of recording, have yet to be announced by either one. But that seems to be the expectations of everybody, and Atlanta does fairly well against lefties. Yeah, it, okay, so... So many teams have just tried to avoid having their lefty starter start against Atlanta anyways. Atlanta has only faced 32 lefty starters this season, which the average team is in the upper 40s to 50s, if that tells you how good Atlanta is against lefties. Mm -hmm. Against those lefty starters, Atlanta is batting 290, 354, 516 against those lefty batters, uh, those lefty pitchers. So like... It's it's a risky decision to say, yeah, we're going to have Ranger Suarez uh, start game one against Atlanta. But the last time he started against Atlanta was like he has one game this season, June 20th. Spencer Strider and Ranger Suarez both pitched in this That's game. Crazy. I know, right? Atlanta won four to two, but um, Suarez actually did pretty well. Six innings, four hits, one run. And it was a solo shot by Austin Riley. Two walks to seven strikeouts. So Atlanta didn't figure him out in the one start they had against him this year. Spencer Strider, though, not only did he do really well, six innings pitched, one run, nine strikeouts with no walks. But in his career, in the regular season, so not counting that oblique injury-affected postseason start last year, in the regular season, I hope you're ready for this, 10 starts, 8-0, I'm sorry, sorry, uh, 7 starts, 8-0 with a 190 ERA and 47 in the third innings. He struck out 72 batters and walked 10 in 47 in the third innings. So he's faced them eight times, once was in relief, and seven were starts, and he's gotten a win every single time against Philadelphia. See, this is crazy because everybody keeps talking about Atlanta needs to be scared of Philly. And honestly, I do. I, I, I somewhat agree with that. I definitely agree with that whenever they go back home to Philly. That atmosphere mm-hmm. earlier in the in the wild card playoff uh, games was absolutely phenomenal. I mean, yeah. I, even as a Braves fan, you got to appreciate a, a home field being able to rock as hard as they did. And that's exactly what they did. So um, I, that does worry me. But on the other end of things, if you're a Philly fan or if you're a Philly player, you got to be sitting there thinking, great, Strider. Yeah, I mean, they haven't, to, to date, they have not figured out Spencer Strider. I mean, they've, they've, uh, and again, that is not counting the postseason start last year. He did not do well in that start again. He was right. coming off of an injury. Um, and so it's, I think they have four career home runs off mm-hmm. of Strider. Uh, they have not figured him out. So this is something, to me, this feels like Atlanta has the advantage in the series because, one, they have a healthy Strider. Mm-hmm. Two, they have the home field advantage. If this makes it to a fifth game, Atlanta gets to come back home. But I don't think necessarily it's going to get to a fifth game and Atlanta wins. I think if Atlanta wins, it's probably in four. 
And for some reason, this feels to me like if Philly can stretch this out and get it to game five, they have a decent chance to win. If Atlanta is going to do it, it's going to be surprisingly quick. It's going to be they're going to knock it out in four games and move on to the NLCS. You and I have not potted since they they did this this week. And uh, and what I was going to talk to you about was the uh, the week's preparation. They they went a whole different route than they did the previous year. Uh, do you think that's advantageous? The good news is is that they also did it without getting anybody hurt. And it seems like even Freed got some work in, which is also awesome because everybody was wondering if he'd be able to do so. But just them being able to do those inter-squad games and even see some faces that you may not have known about uh, sitting out there on the field, I think that did wonders for him. And that last inter-squad game that they had, they had multiple home runs as well. Yeah, so what Atlanta did in essence was uh, trying to recreate you can't recreate the atmosphere, but trying to make it more of a competitive environment than what it was last year. So fans came in for all three games. Uh, they had home versus away. Home was the, for the most part, all of the starters. Away was a lot of the backups and other guys they used to fill out the roster. Marcelo Zuna played first base. I saw that. All three games. He's been taking grounders a lot of, like, pregame this season at first. Had never appeared in a game was not being considered as an option at first base. Uh, but he did this for these three games. Reportedly, he looked fine. And so Snitker actually said he may let him do it in a spring training game next year just to kind of see it in a more competitive environment. But um, yeah, Atlanta went out there. Freed looked good for the most part. Um, Strider did not throw because they were setting him up for Saturday start. But A.J. smith Schauber looked very, very good when he got his start. Mm. And so combine him looking really good against the Cubs. It was three and two-thirds innings in his final start. No hits, two strikeouts, one walk. So you combine that with this inner squad where I've got it here. He went five innings, two walks, five strikeouts, one hit against Atlanta's main lineup. Right. And I'm beginning to wonder if when we get to game three, is it a guarantee that we see Bryce Elder or do we see a AJ Smith, Shaver, Kyle Wright piggyback situation for game three? And I think some of that depends on what happens in games one and two. And then are you comfortable with the rookie going to pitch in Citizens Bank Park for game three? And, and it seems like he, he seems to be somewhat unaffected, but we've seen some things down the stretch that have been a little bit different. Lindsay, I'd mentioned it the first about active wealth management and Ford and the guys over there. I'm telling you, they take care of us. It is playoff baseball, and they want you to know that Braves today and Braves fans got that sponsor, and that is they're right here in Atlanta. Huge Braves fans, just like all of us, introduce you to Ford Stokes, founder and president of Active Wealth, host of Active Wealth Show, AM 920, The Answer, and the author of the incredible book, Annuity 360. He wants to give every Braves fan a free copy of that book, Annuity 360. All you got to do is go to annuity360.net, submit your contact information. You'll get that complimentary copy. They specialize in helping pre-retirees and retirees ready to invest, and they've got the expertise to ensure your wealth and wealth protected position for for growth, Ford and his team at Active Wealth are here to help you. You go to annuity360.net for that book, or if you want to find out more information, you can go to activewealth.com and see what their team has to offer because I'm pretty sure Ford will probably be at the games this weekend in Atlanta. Speaking yeah. of this weekend in Atlanta, got to take advantage early while at home in front of that home crowd with just a five game series. Yeah, look at the formula Philly did last year. Philly came into Atlanta, won one of those games in Atlanta, and then held serve at home. And so that's what Atlanta has to do here. You have to hold serve at home. And if 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 you can go to Philadelphia up 2 nothing, like I said, I think Atlanta wins the series in four. But if Philly steals one of these games from you, then it becomes a lot tougher because you have to now win two, probably, in Citizens Bank Park, and like you said, that environment was electric. You can see, by the way, that they are reacting when they hit home runs and they're screaming and throwing the bat like they've been there before, you know. Right. Um, <laughs> and so, like, it's it's Atlanta has to come out hot. And I was talking to Small Flex. I was talking to Pedro Martinez today. Yeah. Hall right. of Famer Pedro Martinez. And something he, he said the key for Philly to not – or to upset Atlanta – is to come out firing on all cylinders from a pitching perspective because Atlanta is so good at scoring early 
and jumping on your starting pitcher for multiple runs. And so like, so Philly's pitchers had to be locked in from the first pitch. And I think that's the key for Atlanta is you have to get to those starters early. Philly has a pretty decent bullpen, a pretty deep bullpen, and you've got some off days coming up. But Atlanta needs to do damage against the starters because I don't know if you can reliably count on those relievers, especially rookie or prospect Orion Kirkering with his amazing slider. I don't know if you can count on getting multiple runs off of that bullpen. And so you need to be able to score against the starters, preferably get your, get your starter a lead and um, uh, try to get that Philly reliever out or the Philly starter out of the game early so you can wear that bullpen down. Well, let's get into that because that was one of my keys to success is we talked about maybe covering three things. And the number one thing to me is because it didn't happen last year. And I'm glad that they did those inter squad games. The bats have got to be healthy and they got to mm-hmm. be hot. And so, you know, even if it's not necessarily jumping on them in the first inning, I think that it's still got to be early. Second, third inning, something has to happen. And I mean in bunches. I'm not talking a solo shot. I'm talking let's make a pitcher throw to multiple batters, maybe get a walk or two out of him, even pepper the ball around the outfield a little bit. I'm not even talking long ball. I'm just talking get confidence, kill the confidence of the pitcher while the confidence is gained as far as the hitters are concerned. Because you and I have talked about it. Atlanta becomes – some of its strongest when they've seen a guy the second and third time within the lineup. So if they can jump on him right there at the beginning in the first or second inning and go ahead and build that confidence and keep those bats hot, that's why I'm happy they did what they did with the inner squad game because it seemed like last year they all were cold. Ronald was cold. I mean, everybody seemed cold as far as stepping up to the plate. And it was almost because they hadn't seen any – I don't want to say live pitching, but hitting batting practice and, and hitting against live arms like Smith Shaver and Freed is a whole different ball game. Yeah, and and that if Atlanta comes out hot and wins this series, that's going to be kind of the blueprint going forward because no MLB team has really handled that bye week very well. This is the only year or two that we've had it. And the example last year of the teams that had that bye, they didn't do that well coming off the bye. And so uh, it's... I'm hopeful for a few reasons that Atlanta is going to be able to do it. The first one is, like you said, because they're doing this, they should be a little bit hotter. The second one is, for the most part, this offense is hitting significantly better as a whole than they were last year. Right. Ronald Acuna Jr. was not the same Ronald Acuna Jr. last year, coming off of the knee injury, still trying to get his footing underneath them, whereas now he's batting 337. I mean, it's, it's an absurd year. It's an MVP year. And so, so we say, (laughs) so we say, and so the entire offense is better and they've done more to be alive and active and, and peaking at the right time. So provided you can get production out of your catcher spot, which we've talked about that at ad nauseum. There's a great piece on the site right now uh, from Kyle Richardson about should Sean Murphy play every day in the postseason simply because that's when he was hottest is when he was playing at almost every day for Atlanta while while Travis Darno was out. But provided that you can get to the, the pitchers early, I don't think you're going to see a pitcher a third time in this series, right? right? Unless they're cruising. And so you've got to score early, like you said. You've got to score in bunches. You've got to get multiple runs if you want a chance to win this without going five or, or without just being upset by Philly again. Number two for me is stay aggressive and don't get complacent. I mean, when Ronald is on the base pass, let him go. Let him be what he was throughout the season. Let him steal. I know that, in other words, don't play not to lose. Go ahead and stay aggressive and play the exact same game that you've done all year. I would be highly upset if Atlanta came out and played an entire different ball game than what we've all been used to seeing for 162 previous games. Yeah, JT Real Muto is one of the better catchers in baseball mm-hmm. as far as pop time is concerned, but the rules just slant so much towards stolen bases that he's not everybody is going to be able to take bases at will, but Ronald should be able to take bases at real at, at will. And so this is something where you have to like, don't like you said, don't change what you do. Don't start bunting all of a sudden. Don't start doing things like that. Play your game, but it's all going to kind of come back to can Ronald Acuna jr. Get on base can he move can he move into scoring position and can you drive him in that's going to be the big thing 
in this series as far as an, an offensive perspective because I don't know if you can count on the home runs and you're going to face really good pitchers. You're going to face right. Suarez. You're going to face Nola. You're going to face Wheeler. It's going to be hard to string together multiple hits to get guys on base, but that's what you have to do because you can't count on hitting home runs against those guys. So it's all going to come back to Ronald being aggressive. I'd like to see Michael Harris be more aggressive on the base right. paths. I'd like to see Ozzy be a little more aggressive on the base paths. Just guys that can do it, haven't done a ton of it this year. You need to see more of it. The last thing and key to success is me is, is it, I know it generically it's going to be pitching, but I'm not going to pigeonhole it and say it's got to be Strider, it's got to be Elder, it's got to be uh, Freed. What I am going to say is I don't want to see any walks. Philadelphia is one of those teams that will take advantage of the walks, uh, especially if somebody like a Trey Turner gets on. You're going to see the same thing that you see out of Ronald Acuna Jr. You saw it in the wild card playoffs. He was swiping bases left and right. It's almost like he waited to get aggressive until the end of the season when they really needed it. So uh, Harper, same way. He's not the player he used to be, but he's still sneaky, sneaky fast. And if he gets on, he'll try to catch you sleeping and jump out there and grab a bag or two. So don't walk them. Make them put the ball in play. Throw those ground balls like you've been doing all season long and let your defense do the work for you. Yeah, and for me, for pitching, I'm going to be a little more specific and say for the bullpen, you need – think of, think back to that 2021 uh, World Series team and how the identity of that team, yes, you had clutch home runs from Eddie Rosario or Jorge Soler or Jock Peterson, things like that. Right. But the strength of that team was very much the bullpen being able to come out and shut down an opposing rally. You had Tyler Matzik, who could be your fireman. Middle of an inning, come in, shut it down. You had Will Smith find something he didn't have in the regular season. He found a whole different gear in the postseason. A.J. Minter, things like that. And so you've got to have your pitching. You have to be able to stop those rallies when somebody gets on base and Philly's threatening to drop a three spot or a four spot. You've got to have the pitching that can come in and shut that down. And so AJ Minter, very important. Rizel Iglesias, obviously very important. Joe Jimenez, very important. Watch for Pierce Johnson. Mm. He's a guy to me, so not great stats at all when he was with Colorado, but since the trade deadline, he's thrown 23 and two thirds innings and over 24 appearances with a 0.76 ERA in Atlanta. He's allowed two earned runs in that entire span since he's been here since the beginning of August. And so a guy like that, 32 strikeouts in 23 innings, you're, you need the ability to have that plus a guy like a Jesse Chavez. You mm. give me those guys, if they're on their game, and September didn't look great for the bullpen, if they're on their game, I think that's the key to keeping this Philly offense from taking a lead back you know, or rallying to come back. And that's going to be hard, but that's my pitching key is the bullpen's got to be locked down like they were in 2021. Expectations. Mine are, it goes five. Atlanta gets the win. Uh, I know you don't want it to go five. I really don't want it to go five. I no. just, I, I picked every single series to go five here in the, uh, in the divisional series for both leagues. So when we made our picks in our in our groups that we do, uh, I picked all of them to go five. So don't think that I'm just picking on the Braves here. It's every single team I have going five. But I do pick the Braves to take the win here. And, and the reason being is because the new preparation that they did this year, I honestly think that's going to help them out so much more than it did last year. Yeah, I have Atlanta in four. And it's something where I think that the Braves kind of know if they if they – can't win one of the games in Philly, they're probably in trouble. And so I I just see this offense has been too good to not perform. And honestly, I, I honestly knock on wood. I think Atlanta's going to take the first two at home and go into Philly only having to win one and being a little bit looser like that. It's going to give them the ability to get the upset in Philly and come home after four games max with the victory. I also think Ronald Acuna Jr. will be a different ball player on the road this year mm -hmm. than he was last year in the playoffs, and that is something that's got to scare at least Philly fans and possibly even the next team in line, which I picked the Dodgers to lose that series. I was one of the few in there, and the reason being is because I just got a sneaky suspicion about Arizona. Plus, Eddie needs another chance to face him if they get the win with Philly so he can be the Diamondback killer. Those young teams that have a ton of speed – 
cause problems for those old teams like LA. LA is one of the oldest rosters left in the postseason. And so those young teams are feisty and they cause problems. You never know. I picked the Dodgers to win simply because I think that, that, that there's just lack of experience in the postseason. But every year there's that one team that makes a magical run and Arizona definitely has the pieces to do that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to say the least. We're going to also pod after the games, uh, the playoff games, so you guys can look forward to that. We'll have some reaction shows that we'll upload the following morning, so that way you can just get in the mood or in a bad mood, depending on how it ends up <laughs> being uh, after the uh, the next couple of games. He's Lindsey Crosby. I'm Ben Taylor. Of course, it's all been brought to you by Active Wealth Management. Thank you, Ford, for this playoff run. Thank you, Braves, for this playoff run. Lindsey, as always, I greatly appreciate your time, sir. Thank you.